Hey there, everybody. Welcome to The Secret Cocktail. It's Victoria Randall here today with your 12 days of New Year. So today is day three, and the goal of today is to show you how to write a syllabus for your program. So it doesn't matter if you are writing a syllabus for a phlebotomy program, a CNA, a HVAC, it doesn't matter. Cosmetology, every syllabus should still have certain information on it. So I'm gonna go do a run through of a syllabus. Of course, the syllabus I'm gonna run through is a uh, certified nurse aid training program syllabus, but I wanna show you all the components of the syllabus. Now, first thing I wanna say is always keep in mind that the main purpose of your syllabus is that you wanna be able to give students the ability to answer any questions without calling you, <laughs> answer any questions that they may have. So think about any and all questions that a student would have who is entering your program and make sure that your syllabus answers those programs questions. Also, every state does have certain requirements that uh, a syllabus may have to have. So double check with your state when you're getting approval to make sure that your syllabus has covered <clears throat> all of the elements that they require to be covered. So I'm going to go ahead and do a run through of the syllabus now. So the first thing I have here is your school's name, your address, your telephone number, your email, and your website. Remember, in the event a student needs something, they need to be able to contact you, know where to go, know where to, to look for more information. So have that at the very top. Also, it'd be helpful to have maybe your logo or something like that for brand recognition at the very top of your syllabus up here in the header. <clears throat> you can put that rather than the school name in place of the school name, okay? Next at the very top here, I have in bold what the name of this document is, which is the Nurse Aid Training Program Syllabus. <clears throat> now this, Underneath here, which is a um, paragraph talking about this syllabus and why it was created, that is optional. You do not need to have this paragraph underneath here, but I placed it because I thought it was essential um, to the development of this program. So I'm gonna go ahead and read through this document. Notice that every item that is dark and bold is a new section. And I did that because I want the student to be able to easily open up this document and say, hmm, what are the hours of my program? Oh, here it is, program hours. And they can easily find that information, all right? <clears throat> okay, so the very first paragraph here, again, is optional, but it says the following. This course syllabus is designed to provide the student with the information and guidelines necessary to internalize critical thinking theory with Im implementation of critical thinking actions in clinical practice. All theory and clinical learning objectives, methods to facilitate the learning and how the learning will be measured are included. <clears throat> this information encourages the student to become an active member of their learning experience and presents a variety of methods for achieving program success. All syllabi, and then of course you put your school's name there for the NAT program contain the following elements. And NATP stands for Nurse Aid Training Program. All right. So <clears throat> first thing I have here is the course name. Now your course name can be whatever you want your course name to be. If you're, for this purpose, I have it named as the Nurse Aid Training Program. It does not have to be the Nurse Aid Training Program. It could be Nursing <clears throat> Assistant Program. It could be the Nursing Assistant Training Program. It could be whatever you want it to be. This is your program. However, the goal is that whatever you do name it, make sure that it is that exact same name throughout the entire document. Because as you see down here, it says nursing aid, nurse aid training program, but then up here it says nursing assistant training. We have to be consistent. So um, choose the name of your program and stick to it throughout the entire document and all documents that you create. Many states are very picky about this. So if you submit a program and you say your, your program is called um, clinical medical assistant, but then in other places you just call it medical assistant, and then in other places you call it a clerical medical assistant, they will return it back to you because it's not consistent verbiage and that's confusing to the student. Make sure whatever you name it, it is exactly the same on all documents. <clears throat> One thing you cannot do is name it what the certification is the student is going to get. So your program cannot be called the certified <clears throat> nursing assistant program. It cannot be called that. Why? Because that leads students to believe that once they exit your program, they are now certified. And that is not true. They will not be certified. 
they have to go and sit for an exam to become certified. So even a person in theory could finish this entire process and still never become certified if they don't finish the exam or pass the exam. All right, next is your course description. <clears throat> now with your course description, the elements you wanna make sure are there are how long the program is, the name of the program once again, so no one's confused, and then any type of approvals that your program has. So for the purposes of Kentucky, I use that as an example here. <clears throat> In Kentucky, the Kentucky Cabinet for Health and Family Services as well as the Kentucky Commission on Proprietary Education is the one that approves CNA programs. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, Victoria, how am I supposed to know that? Well, let me show you. Now I'm gonna share my screen. If you go to our state, our, our company website, which is thesecretcocktail.com, on our website, <clears throat> when you go to thesecretcocktail.com, you'll click here on state, requirements. Again, that's the three little line. We call this the hamburger menu. You click on the hamburger menu and you go to state requirements. Here is all the state requirements. So if you're in California, you can come and see it's the California Department of Public Health that approves your program. If you go to Georgia, it's the Georgia Department of Community Health and etc. So you can see, and these are actually clickable links too. They take you to the state's website. All right. <clears throat> So in case you didn't know, we have that there as a resource for you, it is there. <clears throat> so back to the syllabus, four week program, the name of the program and who the program is approved by. Now you may be saying, Victoria, my program isn't approved yet. It's not approved yet. I'm just submitting for approval. That's fine. You still have to write up the document as if your program is approved because in order for you to receive approval, the document has to look like it's ready for approval. So it's okay, no harm, no foul to say your program is approved or it's in conformance with, okay? We never use the word accredited. Never say the nurse aid training program is accredited. Um, accredita accreditation um, is a different type of approval process, which normally is for like, like nursing programs or programs that are associates and bachelors. Um, I can't think of a certificate program at all that is accredited. But needless to say, accreditation is the wrong term. And if you use accreditation, they will uh, send back your syllabus. All right, next. <clears throat> um, this program provides entry level training that prepares students to care for residents in need of continuous care. This includes ADLs such as feeding, bathing, dressing, and toileting. Um, this course will also educate students on infection prevention techniques, proper body mechanics, residents' rights, abuse, neglect, and care of the dementia and Alzheimer patient. You can say whatever, whatever your program is going to do. Because remember, I want to become a CNA, or I think I want to become a CNA, or I think I want to become um, a massage therapist. I don't know yet. I need to know how long this program is. I need to know if it's, a, if it's approved. <clears throat> I need to know what type of stuff a massage therapist is going to be doing or a CNA is going to be doing, because maybe I thought I knew what a CNA is going to do. But now that I know that they have to do feeding and toileting, Maybe I don't wanna do that anymore, I don't know. <clears throat> you have to make sure that you're telling the person what they're gonna be engaging in. Next, and the next component is you need to tell the person how many hours specifically, just because it's a four week program, that could be four weeks as in um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday from nine to one. That's totally different than Monday through Friday, eight to five, right? So I need to know how many hours and what the hours are of this course. For course description, you just give them the hours. And so this is a 75 hour long program, which prepares candidates for the state nurse aid exam. It is important if your program prepares them for an exam, let them know that. Students who complete this course with satisfactory progress will receive a certificate of completion, which affords them the ability to sit, sit for the state exam. If your program is not a state exam, then mention the, the exam name. Maybe it's the NHA exam. Um, maybe it's the NHI exam. I don't know. Who is the uh, certifying body? State that. With successful completion of the state exam, candidates will hold a cert certificate as a certified nursing assistant. See how that clears the water? This program, it lets them know when you go through this program, you don't become a CNA, but you do get a certificate of completion, which then allows you to sit for the state exam. And if you pass it with successful completion, <clears throat> and then you will hold a certificate. Okay. And I would say, um, 
with successful completion of the state exam, just because you completed doesn't mean you passed it, right? <laughs> so with successful passing of the state exam, the ter terminology on your syllabus is key. Okay, you have to be very specific about your terminology on your syllabus. So just because they complete the exam does not mean that they passed it. So I'm glad I caught that. All right, CNAs can obtain employment in the following areas. <clears throat> Many states make sure that you tell the student, okay, this here's the program, here's how long it is, but guess what? These are the places you can expect to get jobs because maybe they didn't know. Maybe they thought a CNA can go and draw blood at, at a lab. That's incorrect. <clears throat> Nursing homes, home health care agencies, assisted living, adult daycare, hospitals, and rehab facilities. So this is where you can go get a job. So all this is underneath course description. <clears throat> I hope that is clear. If you have a question about the course description, <clears throat> excuse me, make sure that you write it in the comments section and let me know what about this you have questions about as we go through, okay? Because I'll make sure I come and answer them. Next is your course goals. This is often required in many states. What is the purpose? Like a, a person goes all the way through your program, but well, what's the goal of the program? This can be whatever you want it to be. You can make up whatever you want, whatever your goal is. Maybe your goal is for students to have customer service etiquette. Maybe your goal is for students to, um, to, to get a job you know, in healthcare. I don't know, but these were the goals I stated. So to prepare students for a healthcare career path leading to a certificate, to uphold honor and high principles, <clears throat> um, to demonstrate knowledge and skills of, of the profession, and to identify common clinical procedures performed in a long-term care setting, demonstrate knowledge and caring for vulnerable populations, and to apply for and pass the certification exam. So those were just some of my goals for the course for students. <clears throat> now, units. Some programs may have multiple units. So let's say the LPN program, for ex uh, ex example. There might be about 10 different units, a micro unit, an anatomy unit, a um, medical surgical unit, whatever. <clears throat> well, for the CNA program, there is um, a theory component, which is 59 hours, and then the clinical hours are 16 hours for this particular state. Whatever your state is, you would put those hours in. And be honest, you could even break it down further and say theory hours are, maybe the theory hours are 30, lab hours <clears throat> are um, 29 and then clinical hours are 16. So that's how we break up our 75 hours for a total of 75 hours of instruction. But this program does not have multiple um, units. It's just these three. And maybe for your state, they're named something different. So maybe you had the theory, um, maybe you broke down theory into infection control and you broke it down into um, communication and personal skills and basic skills. You could even break it down further. These are all the things you learn in theory. It's not required in most states, like it's not required in Kentucky, but that is required in Texas. That is required in a few other states. You may have to break each one of these components down even further. All right, <clears throat> uh, prerequisites. What is the prerequisite? All right, prerequisites. Next, we're going to talk about prerequisites. Prerequisites. Next, we're going to talk about prerequisites. What are the prerequisites for your program? So is it that you have to have a high school diploma and, and or a GED? Um, do, do they have to have, maybe they needed to complete microbiology or something. What is it that your program requires your student to do before they even get into it? So for the CNA program, there is no other course prerequisites, other than maybe for my program, I'm going to say they have to have a high school diploma or a GED. Maybe you don't care. Maybe they don't have to have um, a high school diploma or a GED. So you simply put none. Um, it's completely up to you or whatever your state requires. I can't think of one state that requires a student to have a GED or a high school diploma. That would be up to you. <clears throat> um, you may have saw TB test there. TB test is a federal law requirement for anyone entering a CNA program. So that's why that was there, but I'm gonna say GED or um, high school diploma. Next, the student outcome. Okay, this is very similar to um, the course, what was it, the course goals. <clears throat> so you could put um, that there and keep it there. You know, the student will be able to pass theory, clinical portion of the course 
uh, graduate and sit for the state exam, the, or you could take it out. That one, those two are kind of the same. All right, next is program hours. So remember I told you before, we said the program is composed of 75 hours. We said that 59 hours were dedicated to theory and 16 were dedicated to clinical, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the student has the right to know if there's a student to instructor ratio. They need to, they need to know how many students are gonna be in class with them, if it's gonna be a large class or a smaller one. So make sure you talk about um, <clears throat> the ratio. Make sure you talk about the length of the program. And um, so I have that here. Now, oftentimes class is different from clinical or different from lab. So maybe I said the class is Monday through Thursday, eight to three, but clinical is gonna be only on Thursdays and it's gonna be from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. maybe, right? So that's important to differentiate because remember, I'm a student. I'm trying to build my life around going to your school. Make it easy for me so I can know what to expect. If you don't tell me, I don't know, and I'm probably not going to sign up as quickly. I'll sign up later when I talk to somebody. You want students to be signing up while you sleep. So <clears throat> any information that you can make available to them, make available. And then also remember your syllabus is for reference later while they're in the program. So I need to be able to reference this later. Also, um, if there's any type of breaks, I would even go as far as to tell the student their breaks for lunch or basic breaks and tell them what time those breaks are. Because maybe I wanna go pick up my kid or take my kid lunch or I don't know, something during my break. So make sure that you have that information there. Next is instructor information. Your student has the right to be able to contact the instructor in the event of an emergency or whatever. So your instructor's name, contact, phone number, and office hours should be here. If class is from eight to three, well, then maybe my office hours are from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., right? So I know, but it's only on Thursdays. So I know Thursday after class, I better <clears throat> be prepared because I want to go speak to Mrs. Randall to talk to her about some of my questions about the program. So have that there. <clears throat> if there's um, a program director, please have that there also. Well, there should be a program director, not if. So honestly, I would copy this and paste it and have um, information about the program coordinator or the program director, and then type their information out also. Students should be able to contact both parties or either party if they need to. Next is textbook, whatever textbook you're gonna use, write that information there. If I lost my textbook during the course and I need to buy one secretly on a, on a Sunday, have that information there so I can buy it. Uniform, I need to know, oh, I've been in class for three weeks and now we're getting ready to go to clinical next week. I forgot what they said was uh, I'm supposed to do for my uniform. So they can come to their syllabus, they can look on the uniform policy and they can see, oh, I'm supposed to wear red scrubs and my shoes have to be black or white and closed toed. Okay, great, right? So whatever your uniform policy is, make sure you put that there. And then method of instruction, this is a state requirement usually. <clears throat> Students really don't care about this information, but the state makes you say it. So this is how will the student be learning? Um, how are you gonna be teaching? Is it just strictly lecture? I hope not, because if so, your school's going to be boring. You need to do other things. So we'll do lecture, we'll do class discussion, we'll do group discussion, guest speakers will come. Maybe the students will have to do oral reports. Maybe we'll go to the skills lab and do demonstrations. Whatever you're going to do, all the methods of instruction, make sure you have them in here. If you wrote a curriculum already, then your curriculum will already tell you what your methods of instructions are because you already wrote it. So you just pull that out and put it here. <clears throat> Academic policy. I have the right to know what is required for me to pass this class. So it says here that you have to participate in all classes, including clinical, and you have to maintain a 70 or above. Where did, I, where did you get 70 from, Victoria? I just made it up. It could be 75, it could be 80. Most CNA programs, uh, state to state though, 70 is the bare minimum, but I personally don't think 70 is good enough because that means they're barely making the requirement. <clears throat> so when they go to take the state test, they may barely make <laughs> and pass that state exam. Uh, state exams are reported. So you wanna make sure that um, your state exam rates are high and not low. Um, this just goes on and talks about, you know, overall clinical performance, <clears throat> what happens if a student gets an F and et cetera. So you want to be thinking about that. So remember, I, the student, want to know what's my minimum to pass. <clears throat> I want to know what happens if I'm not successful. I want to know how many times I can miss a course. So you might want to say, okay, you can only miss uh, one class, one clinical, something like that there. 
Um, schedule of assignments. <clears throat> this is very important. <clears throat> schedule of assignments is very, very important. I need to know every day what's happening in this class. So maybe day two, I'm having a test or uh, maybe <clears throat> every Friday, I have to do my workbook assignment and bring it in. Whatever's going on, tell me. So I told this student, basically you're having tests every day in this class, so be prepared for that. Uh, there will be checkoffs that will occur on lab days um, and there will be clinical on day nine and 10 of the course. Now, in addition to the syllabus, the student will have a course outline. So their course outline tells them day one, day two, day three, day four, and et cetera. It breaks down and we're gonna do course outlines during our 12 days. So come back on our, for our 12 day um, edition so you can see how to make your course outline. But it will have that information outlined for them. <clears throat> this is just a quick reference. Um, back to student progress. I feel like I already did student progress, did I? Okay, that was academic policy. Okay, student progress, again, remember how it said 70, but up here now it says 75 because I changed it. Make sure if you change anything, it's consistent throughout the entire document. That's another red flag that will get your syllabus uh, sent back to you because you didn't have things the same throughout the document. Here's another place right here where it still says 70. So I wanna change that to 75. So uh, student progress, we wanna tell our student What's expected of them? What well, you will have workbook assignments uh, that need to be completed outside of class, right? So it's not just in class things, but out of class things. You will have quizzes that will be scheduled. So look at your um, look at your course syllabus and outline. The final grade um, has to be a seventy five. And then if students were not sure what the grading scale should look like, here is a grading scale. So. Um, this grading scale actually does not match a 75. I would have to create a different grading scale to match a 75. This grading scale matches a, um, a 70 to 79 because anything in between there is considered passing. If I wanted to change it to a 75, I would need to change this grade scale because according to this grade scale, 79 to 70 is a 2.0, which is passing. Um, if 75 and higher, then this should only be from 70 something to 75. So. Actually, guess what? How to create a grade scale is uh, 12 days of the new year. So I will be doing that on a different day. So come back every day, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the next 12, well, now the next nine days, <laughs> all right? But here's a grade scale so the student understands what all these mean. You have an I for incomplete and a W for withdraw in case they decide to withdraw from the course or they receive an incomplete. They, knows what, they know what that means on their transcript. But this is simply your syllabus. This syllabus is what, one, two, three pages long. Um, yours may be shorter depending on how wordy you get. I hope that this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for joining. I can't wait to see you back tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let me tell you what we're gonna do tomorrow. <clears throat> tomorrow is, yeah, how to create a, create a course outline. So we'll go over that tomorrow. Happy New Year. Hope you get your school started with ease.